So I've looked at a lot of high-end lasers on this channel and not so many entry-level lasers. So in this video, I wanna look at this. This is the 5 watt SculptFun S30. And they've been around for a while, and if you're looking for a first-time laser, then this might be the one for you, so stick around. How's it going, everybody? Steve here, and welcome back to the shop. Now, SculptFun sent me this S30. Now, this is the base model. It's a 5 watt laser module, so it, it's not gonna cut lumber. Uh, but at the same time, it, it has enough capability to do some serious engraving and certainly some cutting. But, uh, you know, we're going to keep it in perspective because the target of this review is really for the first time buyer. Somebody who's been kind of dabbling in the laser space and has maybe decided to buy. And this might be a good laser for you to start with. So what I'll do is I'll walk you through some of the highlights, some of the features. We won't go through the unboxing and assembly stuff that's, that's done to death but we'll look at the highlights that this laser will bring for you and we'll do certainly some some cutting and engraving we'll see what it can do and in the end i'll give you my assessment things i like and things i think they could improve and uh, you can decide for yourself whether this is the laser for you i'll put a pile of links down in the in the description below uh, these are standard sculpt fun links so uh, they're not affiliate links so if you buy one i don't benefit so there's no bias here uh, if uh, you do buy one, uh, good for you, and uh, you know, hopefully you like it. So let's get started, and uh, we'll see what this laser can do. So as we're looking at the laser here, the first thing you're going to notice is it uses that standard 2020 aluminum extrusion, uh, so common on a lot of these diode lasers. In fact, the SculptFun S30 Pro Max, the high-end version of this laser, uses exactly the same frame. It's very solid, and uh, you don't have to really worry about it. And uh, on top of that, they use typical standard uh, stepper motors and a nicely enclosed controller. And uh, that's pretty much the basic features. Now we'll start talking about a few of the things that are a little more advanced. So as we're looking at features here, keep reminding yourself that this is a $330 laser. And you'd expect them to cut major corners to make that happen. But the first thing you'll notice is uh, on the x-axis, rather than using a belt and roller system, they use a linear, linear rail, which means you get great accuracy. And it's something you normally find on higher end lasers. So it's quite a treat. Now, another high-end feature you're going to see on this laser is the use of limit switches. Now, they're mechanical limit switches, but they're available on both the x-axis and the y-axis. And that allows you to enable things like auto home when you start up the laser, as well as absolute positioning, which is not something you normally see on a laser in this price range. Also something you don't normally see is the use of air assist. And this laser comes with an air pump, as well as all the plumbing around it. And it also turns on and off with the laser, so you don't have to worry about having that noisy motor running. But speaking of noise, this has to be the quietest pump I've ever heard. You can barely hear it run when the laser's running. So it's a welcome, welcome uh, feature in this laser or any laser really. So uh, keep that in mind. So a very nice feature of the SculptFun S30 is the ability to do some, some rudimentary repairs. And what they do is they provide you with this laser repair kit. And inside is an Allen key, some O-rings and some set screws and some tweezers, as well as an optic. And this optic is uh, something crucial inside the laser module. If I take the, the air assist off, you can see inside there's a bit of an O-ring in there, a little green thing, it's the same as these. And if I unscrew the next piece of the laser module, inside there is an optic. And that optic is there to protect the rest of the laser from dirt and and uh, pollutants of, of any kind. And what they allow you to do is, is change that optic. And the reason it's there is to protect the rest of the laser module. So if it gets damaged, you can you can take it out and you can replace replace it with this one. And that's a really nice feature because it will extend the life of the laser module. All right, I did a few results here just to uh, put this laser through some tests. And first one is the standard power speed test. And actually, the thing, I, I probably should have, should have started with a little more speed and, and went up a little higher because you can see that it's mostly dark over here. But it's fine because the thing it tells me is that right from almost 0% power, 
uh, it's generating output, which is really good. And at 100%, of course, uh, full power all the way up, it's actually almost cut through a piece of quarter inch MDF here in the, in the 100 at the slowest speed. So it's pretty impressive, actually, all things considered. Uh, next, I did a standard dog on this is actually the material that they supplied with the laser. They, they provided a couple of sheets of, I guess it's Baltic birch, and it, it didn't do too bad a job, actually. Uh, you get nice shading in here. Certainly there's lots of, lots of grain in the wood, but, but it actually looks pretty good. Uh, then I tried a, a cut and engrave. I just threw a quick design up. Uh, any weirdness you see in the design here was me, not, not the laser. And uh, again, it did, a, did an okay job. The sides are cut pretty well, uh, nice and clean, not too much charring. Uh, then I did some stainless steel just to give it a shot. By comparison, on the other side of this, I have the output from the Acer P20. And it's a little darker, but, but again, this I probably could have gone a little slower here and, and made this darken up a bit. But it looks pretty good, even on stainless. And finally, I did a grayscale uh, of my lighthouse image, and this actually looks fantastic. Uh, the boat in the water's uh, got nice definition. The shading, uh, the sun shadow looks great. The, the texture on the rocks is fantastic. I would say this is an awesome engraving laser. So there's, a, there's the results. They look pretty good. All right, we wouldn't be finished a review without some listing of some things I really like and some things I think they could have done better. Uh, on the pro side, uh, it's definitely very quiet. It's actually running about three feet away from me here doing a, an engraving job and you cannot hear it, I, I'm assuming. Uh, so it's very quiet and it's actually using the air assist right now. So, uh, you know, it's definitely wonderful from a, from a sound perspective. Uh, great features for the price. Uh, the inclusion of air assist is a, is a big deal, as well as things like linear rails and, and the limit switches. They've really kind of spared no expense uh, to make this a really nice laser, even though it's only a 5 watt. Uh, solid performance is next on the list. Uh, it's definitely an excellent photo engraver. 5 watts is perfect for photo engraving. And it's actually a half decent cutter. It, it, you know, you're not going to cut lumber. But you can certainly cut uh, Baltic birch plywood, uh, three, four millimeters thick, and have no trouble doing, uh, doing that at all. So uh, definitely really good uh, uh, on the pro side. Now on the con side, a couple things. Uh, just mostly aesthetics. Uh, the limit switches definitely look like they were an afterthought. They took a standard frame that they already had and put limit switches on it, and they just kind of hang out there. So I can, uh, I can see things kind of catching on those. Uh, the, the red shield around the laser output uh, it has a big hole in the side for the air assist to go in and that hole is actually substantially larger than it needs to be. Now I know why they did it. They did it so you could slide the shield up and down if, if you need to, but it actually allows a lot of light to escape off the side. So definitely I would say don't use this laser unless you're using safety goggles. Now they fortunately come with the laser so it's not such a big deal. Uh, and last on the list here, my usual gripe, uh, cable handling. You saw the USB and power cables come in the top of the controller and they're in the way uh, for the most part. But also the, uh, the cable that runs back to the x-axis to power the laser module and run the steppers back there. Uh, it just, it hangs out and it just looks a little messy and there's not a lot you can do with it. I took a look. Uh, now. Having said that, I wouldn't expect, uh, you know, the kind of cable handling that something like an Acer P20 has. Uh, it's clearly the king at this moment, but it's also uh, almost a thousand dollars more than this laser. So, uh, so you know, there you go. N nothing here. Like I said, it's mostly aesthetics. Uh, anyway, uh, so in the end, you get for three hundred and thirty dollars, you get a really fine laser. Uh, definitely worth the money they're charging. It's certainly not overpriced. And uh, if, you're, if it's your first laser, I would say you might want to consider this one. With that, we can wind down. I'll put a, a, a video up in the top here. Go watch that and I'll see you over there. And get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time.